Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. So I'm here um, to talk about something very recent and something very topical, and hopefully uh, some of you have seen and interacted with this, which is the making of the first street art city at Prayagraj. Um, when I came to revisit back then, when it was called Allahabad, about a year ago, uh, the city had a lot to offer, a lot of architecture, a lot of beautiful old buildings in the city and around the city, and of course, great street life. Amongst this were ruins, ruins of some very beautiful old buildings, which should have been heritage buildings. Uh, and of course, people moving around, managing themselves with the city traffic, with the water logging, with other issues that you face in a lot of places. Amidst all of this, I saw a lot of color. So a lot of color, a lot of interesting things happening. You saw people going about their life, whether it was by the river, in the streets, and of course, you saw a lot of art. There's a lot of art already existing in this city. You saw particularly around the rickshaws, the backs of the rickshaws. How many of you may have seen this all the time? It just seemed like people had been sleeping over it for a while. Uh, but it was there. You just had to look for it. So just about then, we got an opportunity to start something here while we were thinking of doing something for the entire city at the train station, the Allahabad Junction Station. And we had an opportunity for a newly created space right at the station to create some artwork for people coming into and leaving out the city. Few of us got together and within less than a week, we took this space and we started building something very interesting on it based on our traditional arts, the Madhubani style arts. So you might see this as the train pulls out from platform one over to Delhi or coming back and see some people nodding their heads. So this was something which was done very quickly at a very strategic location. And while we were doing this, we started exploring the rest of the city. The Prayagraj Mela Authority was meanwhile looking at beautifying the rest of the city as well. So we had an opportunity to see this and start seeing what was going on. Kum Mela was coming up as always happens with large event, big amount of planning is going on. A lot of things are being built. These are pontoons being developed and built right here at Triveni Ghat. Each and every sheet was being bent, turned into these big drums, being tested. And then, of course, we had lots of people pushing them into place and getting them where we could actually walk and drive over them. I just drove over one of them just two nights ago uh, for probably one of the last times. It's not being taken apart. So all of that was being done not too long ago, this was about less than a year ago that this work had started. We went around looking at other locations. So where can we create art? How can we make the city another artistic center, a street art city, so to speak? And then we saw stations, like the naming station here. We saw buildings close to the station. Uh, this was another one, which was a lot of streets like this one were covered with posters. They were covered with advertisements and hoardings. And we said, wonder what we can do with this. Where's how do we find places where we can actually make a difference? Then upon we came to a space, some of you might recognize, called a rail guard. Near a rail guard, we found a lot of peace, solace, and a beautiful, quiet little street with a lot of ashrams and much And we said, hmm, this has some really interesting possibilities. And the mind started working over time. Then there were new tanks being built, water tanks. Besides new ones, there were a lot of old ones, which were I would say not so strong, as we will discover a bit later. So while we were doing all this studying and then you planning your designs and everything else coming together, we said, let's get started. The rains were over. <coughs> now we actually started working on some of the streets and some of the uh, walls in the city. This was close to the PCDA colony uh, near Civil Lines, Shoknagar. And we said, this is where we start. We start with this. We create a lot of images of sadhus right by the river Ganga, and this is also close to the drop the cart, a lot of people sometimes go, and the cart is not as well used as the others. Along with that, we took some of the other buildings and started designing for them, things that were specific to the city, to the Kum, to the religion, and other aspects uh, which relate uh, to this place. We had to work not just at day, but at nights as well. Uh, even the Naini Information Center, which is right below the new Naini Bridge, uh, now was getting a facelift, and we said, let's give it a contemporary look of how 
how do we actually help the girl child uh, educate and prosper? So we said messages can get across without it being a poster, without it being too much in your face, but make it more interesting. Meanwhile, we found these beautiful underpasses which were ruined by advertisements. They were absolutely terrible to clean up. If you had seen what this place was three days earlier, it was impossible to imagine what you were able to do with it. But after putting a lot of people in time, we started the sketching side coming along. And the pillars and spaces around, we started depicting faces of women, of our leaders, of our drivers, who are actually making a difference not only today, but for many years, to the city, to the state, to the country itself. Across the river Ganga, as you can see, as you all know, and there are a lot of ashrams along the river. One fine day, we said, this looks like a great place. A lot of people are going to come here. The tents are going to be set up. Uh, and we could not have imagined how big a tent city was going to be back then. We said, this looks like a good place. We started doing some artwork. And we said, what can we do here? What can we depict here? He says, so next one, Ganga. Why not show the Ganga River, uh, the story behind the Ganga River, of how Ganga rides down on the Karyal and comes down to Mount Kailash. While we were doing this, the two of the ashrams that are there, they got very curious what we were doing, why we were doing, did we have permissions and so on. And then when we explained to them, they liked the idea. Of course, they wanted their names to be put on to the walls as well, which is fine, small decision to make. Uh, and we said, we'll do that, and we'll also look at the other spaces. So the train station, which many of you have seen, now this time was the other end of the train station. We said, let's do the insides and the outside, because this is where people are going to come through. They'll congregate, they'll come here, they'll go back to these stations. So this is where they should see the change happening. The change of inside as well as on the outside. Underpasses, the Aragans, if you go, we had two beautiful underpass passages uh, which lead into uh, the Aragans area. We said we can dedicate this one whole lane towards the story of Hanuman and another one uh, towards the story of uh, Krishna. So the station outside, Daragan underpass, and slowly the artworks started coming together. So these were places where we saw messages on meditation, the message of yoga, and so on. The Nani Information Center suddenly had colorful peacocks on it. People started taking photographs. We had a couple come here who said, we come here almost once every month to visit our in-laws. And each time we come here, the city is looking different. And of course, uh, right next to that was Bhadra Kwai Chauhan's portrait. And I asked her, do you know which school this is? Said, yes, yes, we know. So what's her favorite, uh, favorite poem? She said, Jhansi Wali Rani. And then she recited the poem for us. Uh, so now this building, which was completely covered with all kinds of ugly hoardings, advertisements, and so on, was Laluji's building. Laluji, as people from the town know, was a big, big operator of all the tenting business. When we redid this building, I'm pretty sure even Laluji himself would not recognize what had been done to this building. Had the sign not been there, they may have run, gone right past it and taken all the denting equipment somewhere else. So it was a big transformation. Right near the PCDA colony, uh, we found a beautiful wall to depict Harivanshraya Bachanji. While we were painting him and his poetry, somebody from the colony came and said, why don't you choose this location? I said, because it's a nice spot, it's a good place. There are a lot of residential colonies, uh, people here. So did you know that many, many years ago, when his son was in politics, he actually came here and uh, did the ribbon cutting for the opening of this colony? He said, I have no idea. He says, you just picked this right place, perfect place to pick. Said, okay, that's good to know. We just found a nice location, and somehow the feeling came, this is where we should depict him and his, uh, and his uh, icon. So as you can see, the Lalu Jibo Lake is being shining through. Uh, now the Daragaj flyover has Hanuman flying in and out. And this one, when people see this, say, oh my god, it looks like he's actually coming out of the ground and you know, lifting up all the things. The Times of India news, uh, news reporter and a photographer actually got a great photograph of people walking down uh, right from up there as they come down from the train. And it uh, looks like Hanuman is not just carrying us in Jeevani Bhutan. But all of these people also on top of that uh, as they walk down. And that is the final time that we get uh, one of the papers. Uh, so, like um, one back. Inside this Dharagach flyover, we were to pick on Krishna, as I told you. Now, one fine day I was there and we found this little Krishna trying to make sure that his 
car full of bottles, recycled materials doesn't topple over. It's a perfect moment as he's pushing that, and we see the soldiers behind, and it looks like he's getting some inspiration from Krishna on the chariot as well to keep his uh, cart in shape and, and move on. Talking about train stations, we went back to Nani Station. Nani Station now has a very different look, well, it's had it for some time. Uh, we brought in elements of floral elements and others which locals told us about. And of course, the railway people got involved. One fine day, we went to one of the locations and I looked up and I saw one of my artists. And I couldn't tell whether he was part of the painting or he was actually painting the wall itself. And I looked at him and said, oh my god, this is so amazing. And that inspired us immediately and he said, okay, I think we can depict him in a certain way. Of course, it became a different kind of a depiction on the dark and the other side of the dark. Um, I think very much by G's uh, portrait came up on the Kacheri building. A lot of posters used to be there for advocates and lawyers and others. One night when we were there sketching and the people came and said, um, what are you painting up here? We told them. He said, any help you need, you let us know. Nobody will disturb you, nobody will bother you. Please go ahead and do this. And so since the time this painting has been made, not a single poster of any advertisement of elections or anything have come up on that building. And that is the power of street art. Once we cover wall with nice street art, typically what I call the switch turns on, and people start thinking this is a clean place now. It's clean, I'm not gonna mess it up, I'm not gonna put garbage on it, and not put posters on it. And that's the difference uh, street art seems to make in the minds of a lot of people. Uh, came to an interesting challenge. We mentioned about water tanks earlier. I noticed there are a couple of very interesting water tanks right here on the campus. Um, we'll go back to the story of why the pointy edges on top of one of the water tanks. But these water tanks that we took on were quite a challenge. One is right by the DSA ground, which actually has uh, Sadat Patilji's uh, statue on it. I'm sorry, painting on it. Uh, and the others we painted near the train station. Each of these, the ones which are new, were easy. The ones that are old would actually shake. If you had eight or ten people up there painting, you could feel the entire thing shaking. It was like an earthquake was hitting you, and it wasn't. So you were just happy to get it done and come down from it. Uh, it was quite a challenge. But once you were done with it, and the lights got put on later on, it made a lot of difference. And when you get up there, the views from there, of course, are incredible to watch. Coming back to the rail car, I mentioned we've gone there, and an idea had struck, what could we do with this? Well, we decided to clear this entire street and call it the Devotion Street. Because there's so many ashrams, there's so many muts over there, there's so many people who come there, devotees come there, and they walk to the heart from there. So the entire street, about half a kilometer long, every single ashram, every single home on that street was given a completely different look where some of the input came right from inside. If somebody's running a yoga ashram, they wanted to depict yoga on that, or some yoga rishi on that. Somebody was a Hanuman Bhak, they wanted something to do with his or her story or something about their mind. And so every part of the street, every ashram got a story, a different story to tell. And we call it the Motion Street because as you drive through or walk through the space, you actually get a sense of you are in a very different space besides the serenity that you are used to have in that location. Um, even the animals seem to be more relaxed over there, uh, just like the people as well. And um, around there, there are some marks and ashrams right by the, by the riverside, which you can hopefully visit sometime. Now, we said pontoons are being made for the bridges, and suddenly I thought, there must be a lot of old pontoons lying around, which are not being used very much. What do we do with those? And we went to the ADA vice chairman and told him, listen, we have an idea. So what is that? He said, you give us about 10 or 20 pontoons, and let us create something interesting. And he said, I love the idea, tell me how we're going to do it. And right on NG Road, 18 of these were installed in the form of shivling. And then, not only were they installed, the platforms were built by them, and we went and created different mudras of Shiva uh, on each of them. And as you can tell, the artist had a great time sitting there right in the middle of the street. And now we have an installation which hardly cost the city anything. We recycled a lot of old materials, and we turned it into something interesting. Uh, right here, right in front of the people to watch. 
Not only were we doing that, we also dealt with a lot of Akharas and the Ashrams. Akharas, people sometimes hear when you're not from here, when you're not from the Kumbh, including myself, know very little about it. And we're sometimes a little worried about interacting and reaching out. But they were the nicest people. We worked at the Nirmala Akhara as well as the Jiranjini Akhara. And as you can see, the walls, some of these were not exactly in the best of shape. But we gave them some interesting changes, some look which really transformed them. And soon after that, we would have open invitation from all of them. You must come and stay here during the Mela. You must come and you know, eat with us during the Mela. Of course, the Akshay Wat, which has been recently re reopened for the people. So Akshay Wat itself, part of the renovation, we've got two days to literally change the walls as the entryway because that's when it was going to be open. So we went there, and we did the best we could, as quickly as we could, uh, which is what street art is also all about. Uh, finally, I want to come back to Indira Bhavan. You know, one of the buildings I saw was look and wonder, why is this building so neglected? Why is this building right in the heart of the city look like it's never been cleaned and actually found it hadn't been cleaned in eight years? This was a building we decided to take up as our biggest challenge. We said, we are going to actually change this building because if we can do that, that will truly be a center of what we've done for the rest of the city. So we went about taking what you can see in the smaller picture here and turning it into what you see up on the top, which is really giving it a makeover while cleaning almost 20 trucks of garbage which were piled up on the different parts of the building. Uh, this is the back side of the building. And as you can see, there are artists hung up there on the top and we painted that. And finally, the back side also was given complete change at night, I have not seen it, but I believe you now lights have been put up, so you can even enjoy the views at night time on this. So how is this possible? This is possible because of the team. It's always about people. That's the most important thing. You can make a change, any kind of change, whether it's to a street, an alley, or an entire city, as long as the right people get motivated to do it. We have a great team which came with us. Uh, not only uh, people working in, in, along the villages of the streets, also people working from all over the country. We have people from the south, east, north, west. They all partner together with us to make this big change. And we think a small change like this is what has helped us create the first week city. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for your time.